Africa rice. From harvest to plate. Adding value to Africa's rice. About one third of the food produced in the world never reaches our plates. Not only this is a colossal loss, but all the resources used to produce, harvest, process, and market it are also squandered. Post harvest grain losses account for 4 billion US dollar in Africa alone, according to the CGIAR research program on climate change, agriculture, and food security. This is enough to meet the minimum annual food requirements of 48 million people. In Africa, both the quantity and quality of rice suffer huge losses, especially during post harvest operations. The qualitative losses come mainly as a result of poor handling after harvesting and poor processing techniques, wrote John Manthel, a grain quality scientist at Africa Rice and Quality Matters for Rich and Poor Alike, in the CGIAR blog on Development Dialogues 2014. Until recently, R&D thrusts in Africa have focused mainly on how to increase rice production but relatively less on how to improve the quality of rice. Since the food crisis in 2007 to 2008, governments in African countries have made great efforts to increase rice production, but still quality is less emphasized, said Dr. Rose Fiamoyi, policy economist at Africa Rice. In many African countries locally milled rice is off variable quality and it has a high percentage of broken grains. Sometimes, unhusked grains as well as bran and husk fractions are found in the milled rice. The inferior quality of local rice makes it less competitive against imported rice on the market. Thus African rice farmers find it very difficult to sell their rice because locally produced rice is widely perceived as being of poor quality. Ms. Lena Forsen, who is doing an MPhil in agribusiness in the University of Ghana as part of an Africa rice project said. If you um, increase production so much and you're not doing anything to change the perception of the people who should purchase the rice, then I really don't see where you're going because if they are still buying the imported rice and you're increasing the production of local rice and they're not buying, then it's pointless. However, Africa's rice sector is now more aware that producing just more rice is not enough, and that quality as well as quantity is essential. To be competitive, Africa's rice sector needs to make rice quality and marketing important. Rising to the challenge, Canada's Department of Foreign Affairs, Trade and Development, DFATD, and Africa Rice, in partnership with McGill University are spearheading an ambitious project on food security in Africa with a focus on rice post-harvest handling and marketing. The project involves Cameroon, Gambia, Ghana, Mali, Nigeria, Senegal, Sierra Leone, and Uganda. It seeks to introduce improved harvesting and post-harvest practices and equipment throughout the value chain to achieve high-quality grain. More smallholder farmers and processors in Africa's rice sector are women, who often have fewer rights than male farmers to access the vital resources they need to farm, process, and sell. The project will therefore make sure that women farmers will obtain their fair share of attention in rice R&D. The project also aims to develop new rice-based products, explore innovative uses of husks and straw, improve the policy environment, and build the capacity of rice stakeholders. By 2020, post-harvest losses are expected to decline by 10%, and this will help increase farmers' nominal annual income in the eight project countries by about 32 million U.S. dollars. As part of the project, baseline studies have been conducted on post-harvest practices in the eight countries. Africa Rice Grain Quality Scientist Dr. John Manfel said, I think This is the first time that this activity is being um, performed in these countries with respect to rice. The data is available for other uh, crops, but no reliable data on losses in rice. The data showed that non-parboiled broken rice fetches 41% less price than properly parboiled whole rice. Surveys are also being conducted to develop a map of rice consumer preferences for some of the countries. 
The project is testing and introducing many combines, threshers, dryers, and cleaners that are affordable for farmers and processors. Most of these machines are being made and maintained locally. Senegal, Mali, and Ghana have started building many combines after receiving training. Project coordinator Dr. Jean Morera said, We train one leader fabricator and back home this fabricator with our NAX guys will continue training others. In 2013, 57 fabricators from 10 countries were trained to construct the OC thresher cleaner. A light thresher has also been developed especially for women farmers in Uganda. The project has promoted the development of equipment for parboiling. McGill University is providing technical backstopping to national partners to develop a parboiling pilot plant. Project countries have been provided with lab equipment to do basic quality analysis of rice. The project will enable screening of the African rice, Oriza glabarama, germplasm for constituents that make cereal grain slow digesting to help consumers with type 2 diabetes. It is testing the use of low-value broken rice as the basis of a breakfast porridge fortified with protein-rich groundnut or soybean for undernourished babies and children. Flour from broken rice is being used to prepare food products such as noodles, biscuits, and porridges. Ms. Linda Hagen, scientist at the Food Research Institute, FRI, in Ghana said, After working hard on this and getting the standard that we want, we are I'm going to transfer the technology to rural women so that they can do this, sell, and get some money to help feed their families. Farmers in Africa mostly dispose of rice straw from fields by burning it, which helps control rice disease and pest problems. However, burning of rice straw emits carbon dioxide, which is the major cause of global warming. As part of the project, Africa Rice, in partnership with FRI, is supporting a study in Ghana to assess rice straw and husk as potential substrate and cultivating oyster mushroom. The study also ascertained the potential of the spent compost, the organic matter left over after mushrooms grown on rice straw have been harvested as a biofertilizer. Rice husk, or rice hull, traditionally, is wasted in Africa. Stockpiles of rice husk are either dumped near the mills where they rot, producing methane, a potent greenhouse gas, or burned in the fields, thus polluting the atmosphere. The project has developed a machine to compress rice husk to make briquettes, which burn efficiently in any well-ventilated stove. Dr. Sully Atanga, grain quality and post-harvest scientist at Africa Rice said, This, we think, is a... Uh uh, a very, very important step uh, in terms of uh, reducing deforestation. The project will feed into Africa Rice's ongoing efforts to harmonize rice policy across the region through the regional economic communities. Dr. Ali Udian, professor at the University of Gaston Berger, San Louis, Senegal, and former Africa Rice principal economist remarked, In the long run, rice will be cheaper Okay, when the continent is producing most of its rice from here. Scientists are working with producers to improve quality and processing, while working with consumers to encourage them to buy local rice. Experimental auctions have revealed that consumers choose local rice and are also willing to pay more for it. Building the capacity of rice stakeholders throughout the value chain from farmers, through millers and parboilers, to marketers, is a vital part of the project. Dr. Pani Johnson from the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research in Ghana observes. When you have a project, there are lessons that will be learned from the different uh, sectors. Um, I know, for example, in Uganda, they are doing briquettes. I think um, Cameroon is doing similar things. But we are not doing briquettes. Uh, Uganda is not doing mushrooms. So there's a lot of uh, cross-fertilization in terms of ideas and scientific outputs that can be taken apart.
Some of the success stories can be replicated and scaled up through the Rise Hubs network initiated by Africa Rise to connect partners along the Rise value chain. Mr. Philippi Dro, former Ugandan ambassador to China and current director of Upland Rice Millers Limited, URM, said. And as a member of the Transformation Committee for Africa, it is a, a very interesting and a noble task because I think sharing experiences and talking to the policymakers will make a big change. By helping actors along the value chain add value to Rise, the Canada Africa Rise project is helping raise income, improve rice quality, and expand the market for locally produced rice products. For more information, visit www.africarice.org.